and the Harvard Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Annual Award. At this moment, though, I would like to ask all elected officials to stand and be recognized. And I'd like to specifically thank State Senator Patrick Huston for attending this meeting. Can you all please stand? In addition, I would also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors for tonight's event, Current Technologies Incorporated, Aspirus Riverview, Bolchuk Amy Nakusa, Midscape Technical College, Solaris, John Carr, Heartland Farms Incorporated, Wasaki Family Farms, and Enbridge Energy Company Incorporated. And now, I'm calling all those who are moving and improving tonight at the annual meeting and awards. As many of you know, for using the Zoom app, we share all of the photos and videos throughout the evening. So we encourage all of you to participate. You can find instructions on how to join, how to join on the slide behind me throughout the venue and in the hands of part of the town staff. If you're already in the group, please continue to take some great photos and videos. And yes, this is our 70th annual meeting at work, so I think it's only getting that we take our first ever large selfie. So if everybody's ready, three, two, one. Hi. <laughs>
He worked the overnight weekend shift so he could help coach the Griffiths football team during the week. Another job was for a hardwood flooring company in Texaco, stacking and prep prepping lumber to be dried in kilns. Another summer was spent working two jobs, the groundskeeper and a maintenance man for the Marinette School District during the day and loading UPS trucks at night. In 2016, he entered the race for state senator of the 24th district. He campaigned hard for 11 months and defeated a two-term incumbent. As state senator, he serves on several committees. However, his focus is on workforce development. He does this through his on-the-job series where he spends a day working at local businesses in his district. His goal is to highlight job opportunities, showcase the great employers of our area, and to demonstrate the dignity of hard work. Patrick, we are looking forward to your visit to the downtown and Goosa Mill next week. In his first year in office, 26 bills and resolutions authored by Patrick were passed or enrolled. In his spare time, you might find Patrick brushing up on history, working on his strength training at Adventure 212 Fitness, or possibly at the local health lodge. You might also find him in a deer stand, watching a Badger football game, or enjoying Wisconsin summers at the Teston Family Cottage. He and his wife Hannah met in 2011 while working together on state senate campaigns. They were married just this past August. Please help me welcome our own 24th District State Senator, Patrick Kessig. Okay. 
you struggle to find workers? Well, we do have some challenges. We have an aging demographic here in the state of Wisconsin. Our population at 65 or older is going to increase by 72 percent in the next 20 years. And the areas that are going to be impacted most in our state are places like central Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, western Wisconsin. We also have the plan of work rates. We have more people in the workforce than ever. So as Rick mentioned, one thing that we've done is um, we do the on the job series, where I go work at a employer for an entire day. And uh, it's not just to show up in a nice button-down shirt, walk around and point at stuff for the cameras and look at it. But it's the roll of our sleeve and actually highlight one, what great employers are out there, and to show what job opportunities are out there, because heck, if I can do it, anyone can do it. But it also gives me a better perspective, because oftentimes when the mills come up in the legislature, foot view of what it does. We don't know how it's going to impact your business. We don't know how it's going to impact your workers. Or how it's going to impact your families. And so by walking in other people's shoes for a day, it gives me a much better perspective when bills come up on how I'm going to vote or make these bills better. So to give you an example of some of the places I've had the privilege to work at, all things construction. I got to work there last April. Now, I will be the first to tell you, and my wife, if she were here, she'll tell you the same.
legislative, we're trying to tackle these issues were so easy. At the start of every legislative session, we would introduce SB1 and Assembly Bill 1, and we called the Magic Wand Act, that upon passage of both houses, signed into law by the governor, for the benefit of his risk, all of our problems would be solved. But unfortunately, we don't live in that world. That's not the real world. And so we have to understand that the challenges that we face are not going to be tackled by a silver bullet. on the 
Sports Talk. And there's also a key area of development section. Talk to any realtor. They'll tell you they're looking to sell homes to millennials. I'm a millennial. Sometimes don't act like one. That uh, oftentimes one of the first questions that they ask is, is there access to high speed internet? Millennials will not go into areas where they cannot connect. And so we are making these targeted investments to make sure that all Wisconsin is connected and we're moving forward together. In areas of healthcare and workforce, we understand that in some places in Wisconsin, access to high quality healthcare can be a challenge. We hear stories of individuals who have to travel upwards of two hours long trip just to see their doctor or a nurse or a physician. And we hear from hospitals how difficult it is to train up some of these positions. So in this budget, we incorporated two $1 million matching grant programs for rural hospitals and clinics like Aspires, like Marshfield Clinic, like La Clinica, over in Sheriff County, outside of Delma, to train up their vacancies and advanced practice clinicians and allied health professionals. Trying to make these targeted investments so individuals can get access to high, high quality health care. We also expanded the program to encourage doctors to go train in rural areas. Now, just today, I had a conversation with David Jenkins on the phone, and he was talking about one of the reasons why he moved to Toma from Chicago was because, well, there was an incentive to do so. And what he found out is when he got when he started his practice in Toma, it was truly a great place to live. Our communities have so much to offer. So we just have to dangle that carrot stick out there to get people here. Because chances are, if we can get them here, they're going to stay here. They're going to start families here. They're going to start living the American dream here. In the areas of workforce, we continue to promote partnerships between our schools and local businesses by empowering by empowering high school students to pursue academic credit and apprenticeship credit as an apprentice. It's a bill that just passed the assembly today, in fact, and we're going to be voting on it in the Senate uh, on March 20th. Even Representative Crew, who could be here tonight, as along with Representative Van here, because the assembly is on the floor as we speak, and I know. There's always that little rivalry between the Senate and the Assembly. And uh, Representative Krug was giving me a hard time saying, well, how come you're not going to be down in Madison tonight? We're on the floor working. I'm like, in the Senate, Scott, we're just more efficient with our time. <laughs> but even Representative Krug has a bill right now that will allow our tech colleges and our two-year colleges to reach out to students who have dropped out out of a four-year campus to see if they might be interested in a different educational option. Because if there is one stigma in regards to education and workforce that we have to break, it is the stigma that the only way to be successful and to get ahead in life is to go get a four-year college degree. We have to break that now. Because there are so many jobs out there that require a four-year degree where you can graduate in two years with half as much debt and go on the job market and make sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And then uh, locally, locally we have a lot to celebrate. In just the last year, there have been over 19 new ribbon cuttings in the Wisconsin Rapids area. That's really impressive. And a true commitment that people are willing to come here and invest here because for the first time in a long time, people are, people are optimistic about this area. They see progress here. And I think that was really highlighted in probably the biggest win that we had in the state budget. And that was the money that we got allocated in the state budget to go towards Alexander Field. And I really want to thank our local partners in the room, individuals like Mayor Brew and Poor Ari. Arnie Nystrom.
the Sand Valley, which has been another huge success story, where now we are a destination around the world for golf and tourism. <laughs> now, we knew it was going to be a challenge because it was well, it was going to be an easy lift. Anytime you, you go to your legislative leader and say, I need $4 million, which I did, I sat down with Senator Fitzgerald's office and he said, well, what's your top priority? I said, well, Senator, it's pretty easy. I just need you to cut me a check for $4 million and I'll be on my way. And he kind of raised his eyebrow. I was like, what for? I'm like, well, I need an airport. And I'm not going to use the exact same language that he used. He said, no freaking way. <laughs> and I just sat there and I smiled and I said, I'll be back. And it was really in April. We were out in D.C. I was with the majority leader. I was with the co-chair of the Joint Finance Committee. And we were sitting down at lunch one day and I started talking Sand Valley. I started talking about all the great things that are going on here in central Wisconsin. And I started talking to the co-chair of Joint Biden and saying, you know what, uh, Senator, Senator Darwin, I got this really great golf course that's going to open up this year. We got a lot of air traffic coming in. And you know, I could really use some help. This area could really use some help. And she started, she perked up. She's like, I heard about that golf course. So it was just in the uh, the Gulf Digest. Sounds like a great destination. I can't wait to go visit. Go play it. I'm like, that'd be great. So uh, I was really hoping, and they really need some help. They, they, need, they need some investment in the airport to help with some of their expansion projects. And so I kind of smile, and I'm looking, I got looking at the majority leader in the corner of my eye, and I can see him start to roll his eyes, and I'm like, I think I'm getting an airport. <laughs> and we, we really, we made the case to our colleagues over the course of several months, and, and thanks to our local who reached out to members of the Joint Finance Committee, we're able to get it done. And as Jeremy just uh, mentioned to me tonight, it sounds like we're getting potentially up towards a $2.9 million from the federal government to continue their expansion projects. This is a prime example of what we can do when we work together. So that's why I'm so optimistic about the future of our region, because it just goes to show that if you're willing to work with one another, you can get a lot done. So my challenge to all of you in this room, and myself included, is that as we move forward into the next year, and the years beyond, that we set aside our differences, we focus on what we can agree on and find that common ground, roll up our sleeves, and go out there and continue to deliver victories for our area. We have got a great story to sell here in central Wisconsin. We just have to go sell it. Because I firmly believe there is no better place in old Wisconsin than right here to live, work, and raise a family. So thank you for all that. All that you do it is an honor to be here and a privilege to address you tonight. And thank you.
pleasure of having oh, lunch with everyone. Thank you, Nan. Yeah. I'm blessed 
this evening to accept this award with my father. Uh, very few of us probably have the, the privilege of uh, being able to accept a award that uh, was something that has, has been around as long as dad has and our business has. So on behalf of Coldwell Banker Seaward Realtors and the Seaward family, I want to thank you for selecting us to receive this Community Spirit Award. I also want to thank my wife, Sue, for her unending support over the years. Without her, there's no way that I could have gotten to this point either. In our 85 years as a real estate business, we have represented the Wisconsin Rapids area as a community where you can raise a family, get a good education, appreciate God's wonderful creation, and have and enjoy a great, great quality of life. We have done so because we believe it. And we take every opportunity to communicate the attributes of our community and the entire area. More often than not, we are the first person a new resident will meet when they are looking for a new place for them to call home. As a business and a family that has been here for 85 years, we realize that the residents of the community are its lifeblood. They are its personality. They are what will determine its future. It is also our belief that volunteering and service to our community is vital to its growth and success, and that begins with each one of us. My parents were wonderful role models when it came to volunteering and service in our community. I learned from them that you have to give back, and that has become the core value of our company. All of us here tonight have something to offer, whether it is sponsoring an event or participating in one, serving on a board, or serving a meal to those that are in need. Being an active participant in a civic or social organization or supporting our many educational, cultural, and sporting activities. There is a place for each of us in this room to plug in become a part of what will keep the Wisconsin Rapids area vital and growing. Again, thank you for this Community Spirit Award. We intend to be the cheerleaders of this community for generations to come.
Jim Newman and the Bridges and I. The Bridges for shutting down their golf course, their business, to have this take place, and Jim Newman for volunteering his time. So I would like you to welcome to the podium Jim Newman and representatives from the Bridges. Thank you. 
The Chamber Champion Award recognizes an individual who goes above and beyond to support and assist the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce with promotion and events. This individual is a hands-on business owner. You will likely see him part of work alongside his employees. It's also likely that you'll get a quick smile and a personal greeting to him when you're at the restaurant or you run into him in town. He goes above and beyond the call of duty for us during the lunch by the river season. He's willing to come in way early in the morning to barricade the parking spots each week, even if he's not a vendor that week. He builds in for us anytime we need him, even at the last minute. You see a theme here? Showing in the last minute. Um, so as a last minute vendor at events, he's also willing to donate and support the chamber at any time. Please join me in congratulating this year's Chamber yeah, Champion Award recipient, Craig, or Craig Hansen, the owner of Rocky Rapoca.
Sculptor of the Year would be. So this year, I would like to announce that Kim Grover is our Ambassador of the Year.
board member of the Harvest Johnson. Welcome, everybody. I get the privilege tonight to introduce the Shining Star Award for 2017. This award is presented to a service organization, a public institution that exemplifies innovation and program development and dedication to community service and leadership, all with the focus of acclimating and services to meet the ever-changing ever ever needs of our community and must be a heart of Wisconsin Chamber member. I'm honored to present this award this year to Boys and Girls Club of Wisconsin Rapids area and the Johnny Alexander Southland County YMCA. The collaboration of the club and Y is truly a unique one with the goal of expanding programs, services, and access, all while sharing resources and eliminating duplication of efforts. This partnership will allow both organizations to serve more people in a much larger way. This project is a realization of many dreams, countless hours of planning, fundraising, and conversations, all with the focus of making Wisconsin Rapids a better place. With the leadership of Brad and Kent, the staffs at both organizations have been integral in the design of the space, ensuring it will meet the current and future needs of both organizations. The teamwork doesn't stop there. The partnerships that expand far beyond the walls of the Y and the club have made the project what it is today. Volunteers, board members, donors, and community members have proudly stepped up to show their support in making this dream a reality. A member of the Building Futures Together campaign said it best, this new building will not be just a physical space. It will be a place that is going to change people's lives. At this time, I'd like to introduce Brett Shellshider, CEO of the YMCA, and Jill Krzyzewski, board president of the Boys and Girls Club, to step forward and accept the 2017 Shining Star.
said, pull the mic down. Thank you. 
Education Center, named after my mother, will be opening this summer in our building. We'll be hosting educational classes, uh, perform presentations on Medicare and Elder Law, um, and hopefully be teaching and doing uh, streaming video courses throughout the country, based right in Nakusa. We continue to grow, and our goal is to be the primary Social Security disability firm helping people apply for disability, uh, helping people with their workers' compensation claims, to help veterans with their disability claims, and to uh, uh, help people in the later stages of life with planning for elder law and estates. Our heart is in making a difference. Um, my uh, wife gave me a giraffe a while ago uh, to remind me that my philosophy in life is always to stick my neck out. And I look at that every day at my desk and remember that that's what this is all about. I personally want to thank my wife, Chris, for all the love and support she's given me through these years. It's been a lot of tough time, and I know that I'm not the uh, most easy person to live with, nor am I the greatest boss, <laughs> but uh, I try. And honey, I couldn't do this without you. Um, in closing, I just want to point out one thing. Well, some leave buildings and monuments to their legacy. There's nothing wrong with that. For me, I believe the legacy I want to leave is the difference I make in people's lives, the thousands of lives our office touches. People who have now an opportunity, who have done everything they should do, and who just have had a bad luck, health, accident, whatever, who now have an opportunity to eat, an opportunity to have a roof over their heads, and an opportunity to have a better life. And so that's that's what we're about. So thank you very much for this honor. Good evening. My name is John Sonnenberg. I serve uh, on the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, and I work for the Town of Rome. Tonight is my privilege to introduce the winner of the Innovative Business of the Year Award. This award is sponsored by Critical Worldwide, and the criteria used in the selection include business investment in new processes, a commitment to new product or service development. Uh, the business, they must be in business for at least three years. They must be a Heart of Wisconsin Chamber member, and they must create a culture of innovation. I looked up the word innovation in the dictionary, and it was defined as something new or different that is introduced. I read an article uh, that uh, business experts commented on what they thought innovation meant. One said it was the application of ideas that were novel and useful. Another commented it's the fundamental way companies bring constant value to their customers' business or life, and consequently, their shareholders and stakeholders. And another defined the innovation process as a great idea, executed brilliantly, and communicated in a way that is both intuitive and fully celebrates the magic of the initial concept. Why, those, why there are those who would argue that golf is not innovative, nor is it new to our area. The Heathland style of golf certainly is. Golf, as it was meant to be, is their motto, and it certainly fits here. With Sand Valley opening in 2017 to rave reviews, and both Mammoth Dunes and the Sandbox opening in the spring of 2018, there is continually something new to experience, and I can't wait to see what the future will bring. It is my pleasure to introduce Jackie Cole of Sand Valley to accept the award for Innovative Business of the Year.
John is also on our board of directors at visitromewisconsin.com and the we form tourism entity in the town of Rome. Um, so first of all, how many of you have been out to Sand Valley? Um, visit to golf on a business after hours tour? Um, so if you were there last year, the year before, and haven't been there this year, you won't believe it. It changes. Every time I go in there, I see something different. Um, on the tables, there's one on each table, is a magazine, it's called Mammoth Vision. This is a marketing magazine used for tourism, and it was produced in conjunction with Sand Valley and Visit Rome, Wisconsin. So take a look at that magazine. These are actual pictures from Sand Valley. This is just 20 miles south of here. These are manufactured pictures. It's just that beautiful there. Um, so the Kaiser family and Jen, um, Glenn Murray asked me to accept this award. I think you probably met or uh, seen both of them speak at various places. And um, they asked me to accept it because I'm the first employee at Sam Valley. And I'm also joined here tonight by Alyssa Fermo. Alyssa is our HR manager. She's also 2000, she didn't want me to tell you, 2007 graduate of Lincoln High School. Um, so we're lucky to have Alyssa here. It, it was a big deal to be the first employee at Sam Valley. Everybody there was sick of hearing it said. so 
award on behalf of the Bell Fellows. Although I may 
may not be involved, involved in such a large capacity anymore, I do look forward to staying involved within our community. And I encourage each and every one of you to do the same thing. As what JR said earlier, if all of us become involved, together we can all make a difference. So at this time, I will be handing over leadership of the organization to Nan Taylor. Please join me in welcoming Nan Taylor as your 2018 Carter Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Chairman of the Board. Yes, sir. 